Hey, what's up, Aaron here, and I'm gonna be including this intro into a series of videos for Fly Me to the Moon for Angelina Jordan. Now you see my background is not my normal. I'm on vacation shooting some videos, trying to get through the rest of uh, my vacation time for you. And uh, I decided to lump all the Fly Me to the Moons all together, um, similar to what I had done for At Last. So I'm gonna include this intro and you can see there's quite a few here uh, from Fly Me to the Moon from ages eight and nine and that's what I'm gonna cover. Now I'm gonna sequence them um, and we're just going to go from the top down because they all look like performances with one exception or two exceptions. There's two rehearsals in there. So I see a rehearsal at the age of nine and then another rehearsal for Little Big Shots. So we're going to invert the order for the rehearsal for Little Big Shots uh, with the show. Other than that, we're just going to go sequential. So I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, include this intro for all of them, and then I'll number which one we're doing um, so that you can watch all of them. It's a lot, uh, a lot of uh, different Fly Me to the Moon, so uh, it should be interesting to see, you know, what differences she has, how she progresses, and so forth. I don't know that they're necessarily in order or sequence, so I'm going to do my best to try to understand what kind of developments she has in them or not or whatever. Um, I've only reacted to the last one here, at least listed last, which is from the Hemnes Botten Fjord Festival. Um, and so, um, you know, that was just fantastic. Um, and it looks like it's the last one here, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, right to it. Okay, so here we have Angelina Jordan concert with Josh from the Redmond Quartet and Stevie Wonder Jazz Festival 2014. So um, I don't know if they're going to be joining her or what. I don't see the quartet on stage as we get going, but that's what it says. So this would be fantastic to see. Um, also, same time period, 2014. Okay, so here we see very much the sound, and I think it's the same guitarist as the other jazz festival we watched. Um, there's no Josh Redman Quartet here. Um, you know, just the same, uh, same uh, you know, small arrangement with just the guitarist and her. Um, and we see a lot more, you know, straight tone, um, similar to some of her early performances. Um, I think the... Um, full concert that she did as well, um, less so from the view and that rehearsal um, tone. And yeah, I mean, it's it sounds good. I, I like, uh, there were a couple subtle things that I noticed, but I don't remember the specifics. I think I went back a little bit too far. Oh, there's Sarah. So I did hear some of that tone in to the, but not quite as strong as the others. Yeah, the and uh, Mars. So she chooses not to enunciate the and um, Mars, like and uh, Mars. But it's not the enunciation that I stopped here. It's it's her sound and, and um, her choice of um, phrasing.
Sorry, I just want to check. So I just reacted to the wedding version, and I remember saying to that, um, it didn't feel as long in, in legato. So I'm going to pay attention now again um, if I feel this, the difference here. Yeah, so there's no doubt that that one, um, the choice was much um, shorter, um, which again is a choice. But I do feel like timeline wise, that one was later. We hear a little bit of a whistle here, which I imagine she's she's struggling with that with the, the teeth development here. Um, at the end of the note, so a little. Yeah, Marsh, um, which has to be really difficult for her. Um, I can't imagine, you know, performing and in, in your mouth changing like you like that. Right at the end of Mars. I also wonder, she's obviously used to it at this point because she's always decorated, but what is it like to wear this like huge bouquet um, on her head? I mean, she's always so dressed up and just stunning, you know, girl, like really. That was so legato. All of it, one phrase. Please be true. And almost an R sound on that. A true. Which is something you hear a lot of like um, alternative rocks, you know, uh, do. You might have heard me in some of the other ones talk about like tapping the feet and timing, but you can see it accentuated here, um, right? He's bopping up and down, keeping time. And I lower, please be true. And I lower, I love you. I mean, she's got three different variations and all three of those notes of her vibrato right um i think the first one is none the second is immediate onset right from the get-go and the third is delayed Yeah, exactly. So you hear So 
So the first belt is like she's wavering a little bit. Um, it's kind of a slow, like super slow vibrato. Um, I'm not even sure it's a vibrato. Like she's not a hundred percent on the pitch there. Um, I don't know if that's a choice or not. At this point, I imagine it's probably choice. But so not really a vibrato on there. And then when she hits the second long note, it's a vibrato right from the bigecko. And then on you, there's no vibrato, but then she sets it nice and, and, and controlled at the end of it. And there's just so much control for this little girl. And this audience here, you see mostly older people, though a lot of blue shirts. So, like, I'm sure it's event organizers and stuff. Maybe they're just there to support. Maybe it's her. I don't know. Um, but you see the age is very different from the other jazz festival we saw, which was, like, you know, little girls. Yeah, I think that's a jazz Andrew festival. Jordan, sure. Eight years old. Forty years. Winning, <laughs> winning of uh, Lost Talent in April this year. Unknown until April. Well known after. <laughs> if you can read, you have an idea that Joshua Redman is the next artist. And you are so right. Welcome, Joshua Redman Quartet. Oh, well, we're not reacting to him, so um, as much as I love Duster and the Quartet, uh, we're going to leave it at this, and if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so now. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.